All right, so I'll call the meeting to order at 717. I am joined by my colleagues, Mr. O'Leary, Mrs. Gonzalez, Mr. Studo, Mr. Walner, and we'll begin with the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And under the provisions of the open meeting, Lara, as you just heard uh, Mr. Gilberto announce, this meeting is being recorded, being recorded by Mr. Gilberto, and it's being recorded by NORCAM. And I think that's all. That's all who's recording, right, Mr. Gilberto? All right. Our first order of business is minutes. Um, Correct. Do, do we have a motion? Yes, and I believe there were revised minutes. So, <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to approve the revised minutes of the December 7, 2020 regular session as revised. Sorry. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mrs. Gonzalez. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Manupelli is aye. And Madam Chair, I move to approve the December 7th executive session. Written. Second. A mo motion by Mr. Studo and a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Walner? Aye. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez? Aye. Manupelli is aye. <clears throat> Next order of business is the COVID-19 update. Mr. Gilberto. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Can everybody hear me okay? I'm just going to read from last week's uh, announcement. Um, as of Tuesday, December 15th, the town had been notified of 549 cases of COVID-19 here in North Reading, which included 485 residents and 64 patients at or associated with the Royal Metal View uh, Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. 419 cases recovered and 114 cases being monitored by the North Reading Health Department. 16 cases, including 13 at or associated Royal Metal View, um, and as well as two town residents and one suspected case that were deceased. There was a third town resident um, that was recently identified by the town in state public health records. Um, the death uh, did occur in the fall. Um, it was identified in the state's records at this point. And again, there's a lot of data that were being provided as, uh, as you can imagine. So um, also I should note that since the beginning of the school year, North Reading Public Schools and or the health department have assisted in responding to 12 staff and 23 student cases of COVID-19. That was as of last Tuesday. I think some of you may be aware that the school department has put a dashboard online that they are now updating to show the current um, numbers of staff and students that they're assisting with uh, as positive cases uh, on an ongoing basis. That's in addition to the notification that's going out to the um, North Reading Public Schools um, uh, families uh, through uh, email, uh, which the superintendent is sending out. So with the data being at that, at those numbers, um, I don't think any of us were surprised to see that the community was um, elevated into the <coughs> category in the state's map uh, relative to COVID-19. Um, we, uh, a number of us participated in a conference call with um, state officials this morning relative to that designation. Um, it was more focused on the restrictions and enforcement than on uh, the public schools, um, but um, basically providing information and resources relative to where the state can assist in interpreting and providing guidance and when necessary and enforcing in the community here. Um, certainly was very helpful. I think a lot of it is information that we've come in contact with over the past few months and has been highlighted at the state level as uh, other communities have gone into that red category. Um, I should uh, note that you know we continue to be in a good spot with regard to the PPE being available for municipal departments here in town. Um, there are efforts underway for um, the vaccination of um, first responders, um, town employees who are first responders um, as soon as early January. And that's being handled by the, um, the two chiefs in conjunction with the Board of Health and, associate, and health departments in the surrounding area. 
I'll, um, I'll stop there um, with regard to the update um, and um, be happy to answer any questions at this point. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Any questions? Mrs. Gonzalez? Yeah, um, uh, in regards to the, to the numbers and the new numbers, a few meetings ago, you, you mentioned that you now had to count in probable cases. Is that still the case? Mr. Gilberto? That is my understanding, yes, that those, those probable cases, which are the antigen testing positive cases, get, get rolled into that number. And they are subject to a confirmatory um, number. So the way I understand it, and I haven't talked with the public health nurse in detail recently, but I, we're seeing a real-time number. There may It's possible somebody could test negative on a PCR test and, and reduce that number. I think that that certainly is a possibility. I don't know how probable it is or how often it happens, but I think that that is a, certainly a possibility. Okay, and they, but they don't break it down. We don't know how many of those are probable and how many are not. So we're we're actually breaking the data down on our own here on on a weekly basis. Um, rather than at one point, as you know, we were we were the sole source of information relative to the case, cases in North Reading, and then the state started issuing um, these uh, weekly reports. And when um, when the activity level saw an uptick in uh, early November. We went back to the weekly, uh, or pretty much weekly reporting of the numbers, um, you know, from the health department. Um, so we're, we're breaking it down as best as we can, but I, I can't stress enough that it, it's, it's dynamic. The cases come on, there can be a lag in when the case comes on from a test result. So we may be getting phone calls from people saying they tested positive and we don't have them on, on a list. Conversely, that I mean, I think it's rare, but there are cases when we call someone and they don't know that they have tested positive. Um, I, I think that that's rare. Um, there, you know, I think you're all aware of a state contact tracing collaborative that was established earlier on in the pandemic, and we do rely on them, particularly for cases that do not have a connection to the North Reading Public Schools. The cases that do have that connection are often going to the public health nurse or the school nurses. Um, um, there, there has been, um, there is quite a bit of volume going to that state contact tracing collaborative. So we've been doing some work with the expanded local contact tracing here with some town employees um, over the past um, few days. And that's something that I hope we can uh, ramp up a little bit more to provide a timely um, timely information to all of our residents, but particularly to those who may, may be required to quarantine. I think that was a long answer to your question. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. All set, Mrs. Gonzalez? Yes. Any, Mr. Strudo, any questions? Mr. Mr. Strudo? Uh, just a quick one and um, maybe, Mike, when, you know how there's a lot of false positives, just like false negatives, you know, both. Um, do the, once they're, are they try, do we try to like, does the state try to correct those or, and the only reason I ask is because there's been a few things and nothing that dramatically would change the numbers, but there were a few instances where, you know, there's been thousands that were false negatives that they came off, but they're buried on page 18 of uh, masscovid.com. So my question is like, at least is the board of health aware of these? And if there was anything like, I'm just saying, let's say 50 cases were false negatives for mass, uh, false positives for, you know, North Reading, would we be notified of that? Or is it something where we just, you know, we just, we don't, I, I'm just curious. Through you, Madam Chair, it's being reported to me, um, you know, in it, as sort of a onesie twosie type thing where um, these cases are being looked at on a case by case basis. I can get some more information from the public health nurse about, you know, mechanically what happens to them when they get, when they become, a, you know, when a suspected case becomes a negative. Um, I have not heard that there's any been, that, that there's been an overrun or an exceedingly large number of false positives, but I, I couldn't comment directly you know, to the numbers without asking for a full report, which I can do at our meeting tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm just curious. I'm just saying that, you know, I, I know when it comes, again, when it comes to a lot of reporting at the federal and state level, there's always revisions, whether good or bad. And I feel like I find it very hard to believe that there hasn't been one positive revision in 18, I mean, however long this has been going on. So I was just curious that if it, if there really is no positive revision, that's, that's fine too. So that's why I asked. Sure. Okay, Mr. I'll set Mr. Studo. Mr. O'Leary. Hey, I just want to comment on 
you know, the report that he just gave, but also, you know, what are we seeing here locally, statewide, nationally, um, whether it's false positives or duplication of, it doesn't matter, the, the numbers are going through the roof. Um, you know, you got 3,700 more in Massachusetts today, 41 more deaths, 115,000 cases in Massachusetts. You got 84,000 active cases. You've got 2,000 people in the hospital, 441 people in the ICU unit. This is just Massachusetts. And what's happening across the, the country is uh, exponentially even worse in different places. I mean, a lot of the hospitals are at capacity or close to capacity now for uh, uh, dead uses for, you know, for the, just for, for COVID cases, never mind for what normally happens to people during their daily lives and, and in living. I get that. The positivity rate's at 6% uh, from a low of just, what, a couple of months ago, 0.4%. Uh, it actually be at 76 if they included the college uh, testing, but it's at 6% right now. Seven-day average of hospitalization, 1,900. It's crazy. Um, and, and again, nationally, what have we got here? We got almost 18 million cases. 197 new ones today. 316, 317,000 deaths. I mean, these are people, real people that have died because of this. So, and they're projecting over the next three weeks, the average daily cases, which were 197 today, 197,000 cases, something like, it's gonna be 250,000 per day cases, you know, projected in three weeks. You know, so again, we need to ask people to, to do their part. And again, we ask them every week and every time we meet, everybody else is doing the same thing, you know, just, whether you like it or not, you, you know, wear your mask, you know, don't do it for yourself, do it for other people, you know, take the basic steps, you know, try and limit. I mean, I know that, you know, my Thanksgiving holiday was very different than it's ever been in my, all my life. You know, and Christmas is going to be the same. You know, we're, we're limiting it, we're limiting the travel. And every single day over the last month, I know people now, more people now that have been impacted by this families that have been impacted by this, you know, people say, you know, I didn't know anybody, you know, I hear, see, I see the numbers, but I really don't know anybody. I don't know. I haven't bumped into anybody in the last three weeks that says, oh, I haven't heard of somebody or I don't know, or I don't have a relative that's now been impacted by this. And it's getting exponentially worse. It's wonderful that there's vaccines out there, but for most of us, we're not going to see it until April, May, June. And, and you know, I, I have to applaud uh, the governor of New Hampshire, uh, because he, he said what I was thinking, you know, when, when I heard that uh, members of conference uh, of Congress are cutting the line basically and getting getting vaccinated and they haven't done their job. You know, uh, if they happen to meet the age requirements, that's fine. But for the most part, you know, they, they, they're about to pass a stimulus bill today that doesn't include any aid for cities and towns or states. Absolutely ridiculous. The ones who are on the front line here, uh, who are going to have to absorb a lot of these costs, they're not including, you know, leave it for another day, aids to the states and cities and towns. I mean, what are we going to be doing going forward? Who's going to pick up the costs? Who's going to have to handle it? Um, and, and I'll jump ahead to the member's report. Our Board of Health is doing a very good job right now of working on a public education campaign as to, you know, uh, vaccinations, when they're going to be available, who they're going to be available to, and going to be up and running online, uh, shortly uh, to educate the people in North Reading because that's who we're responsible for um, from a public education standpoint as to when the vaccinations are going to be available, where they're available, who's eligible, encouraging people to do it and at the same time doing a public education campaign to encourage people to, to get the vaccination, what the impact is. So, you know, we're doing our bit here locally. And again, I applaud the, the Board of Health's effort and the administration's effort to get out there and do it. But you know, this is real, you know, we can quibble over, you know, the positivity rates and quibble over, well, are they counting the probables or not the probables? The facts are, this thing is escalating, not de-escalating. We need to recognize it, keep that message out there and tell people to do their part. There is light at the end of the tunnel. There appears to be an end in sight, which is good, but it's still going to be six months, close to a year away before we're back to normal. But let's accept it. At least we see an end in sight. So I don't think we should be downplaying it and questioning the numbers. Just accept the numbers for what they are. They're awful and they're getting worse. And with the holidays upon us, they're gonna get even worse. So let's do our part and encourage people to do their part.
Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Can I just clarify, I, Madam Chair? I would like to too. I, 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 I'm, I'm, on, gonna, just one I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on. I'm not gonna. I, I'd, I'd rather not have a debate. Two of us haven't even had the opportunity to comment, and everybody has a different perspective on it. But Mr. Waller, do you have any anything? Do you have any comment? I, I choose not to participate. <laughs> <laughs> Great, and uh, you know, I'll just. I'm, I'm not going to editorialize. I, I understand many of you do, but I, I, I will say that in, in, in the reviews that, or in the studies of other countries that have got this contained, although there's a new strain out there that's kind of sweeping through, uh, but in the studies of the countries and how they contained it, it was a consistent message and it was a consistent effort. And I hope that the entire country can get on board with consistent messaging and consistent effort here. I'm hopeful that that's going to be the case. And I'm hopeful that the vaccination is going to make a big difference. And I'm hopeful that we can get more of it to Massachusetts than, than what was allotted, that the reduced amount that was allotted. And I, and I'm applaud, I would applaud our Board of Health it's a it's a Herculean task that the TA and the Board of Health and our staff is doing. But we'll get to board member reports later, though I appreciate it. We have to go to public comment now. So I'm not going to skip over that one today. So we have and we also have a 730 meeting um, with the members of the Community Planning Commission who have joined us at this point. So let's just quickly invite any attendees to who would like to have public comment to step forward, raise your hand or chat or um, make some noise on the phone there. So we know you're available. Is anyone here to provide public comment? All right, seeing seeing none, Mr. Gilberto, you don't see any, do you? No one's in the chat. We will, <clears throat> now we'll move on to board member reports. Well, Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you. And just to clarify, I was not downplaying. I just, the facts are the facts. I'd just like them to be that. Um, I'd like to take my time to thank a local hero, Sergeant en Encarnacio, I hope I'm saying that properly, who on December, early morning, hours of December 8th, actually just a couple hours after our board meeting, ended. Um, he was driving home from his shift and saw flames, um, was able to knock down the door and, and get a couple of people out. Our fire department was able to take a 13 year old boy, um, pull him through out through the window um, and really save lives. And um, this truly could have been tragic if Sergeant and can Narcia was not alert and aware. Um, our first responders are just always alert on or off the job. They, they really, I feel are never off the job. Um, and I just want to sincerely thank him and our fire department, all our first responders and, and thank them from stopping what could have been a very tragic, tragic thing. So. Thank you. All set? Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Studo. Hello. So um, a couple couple things, uh, both from the um, discussions with the uh, as liaison to the uh, CPC uh, that we had the meeting last week, a couple things. One, um, briefly discussed a, well, the CPC did a great job of uh, discussing that uh, the Benevento family might want to put a um, another commercial space at the uh, at their lot by North Street and 62, which would be used for offices, not uh, you know salt and grain or whatever else they're doing over there. And um, you know that's something where uh, you know Mr. Pierce and Mr. Hayden you know gave some public comment. I think that you know anyone who had an issue or a question got there got it answered. So you know um, you know it was definitely something just to you know, that happened last week. And at this point, uh, some plans have been done, but I believe that is uh, where it's at, at, at this step of it. Uh, there's still some finalizations happening. Um, 
my bigger update for the CPC is in the uh, Carpenter Drive. Um, Ms. McKnight was uh, kind enough to uh, give me a, a summary. Uh, I know it's a project that started way before me. So as liaison now, I kind of had to be brought up to speed. So, you know, uh, just a little background for anyone listening, you know, Three Carpenter Drive was, uh, it's a town owned property that uh, has been identified for senior housing. And um, through the hiring of uh, an affordable housing consultant with a, from, with a $25,000 community uh, compact grant, uh, we're trying to develop uh, an RFP or request for a proposal. Um, right now, really some of the key considerations, you know, it, it's in the, wouldn't say infancy, but you know, there's, uh, you know, the developer appraisal, there's a lot of things to go in and it's just not ready yet uh, to be presented. Although the goal of the uh, Ms. McKnight and the CPC is to have everything in in a response before June town meeting um, of next year. So uh, hopefully they make progress. And just uh, a few things also noted for consideration of it. Um, you know, some of the things that uh, through the neighborhood outreach, you know, it's always important of what the abutters have to say, as we've seen, um, you know, the makeup and affordability of the potential market rate is a consideration. And that's going to determine how the, you know, how the, uh, the structure, uh, the project is structured, density of number of units, what's appropriate, what's desired. Um, and also there will be enough space, um, it seems for open space, excuse me, so they'll be able to leave a lot of undisturbed areas. So hopefully in that respect, you know, it's some of the, you know, and again, not trying to step out of term, but maybe the RFP would, you know, put together something that would alleviate some of the abutters concern as when any development goes in. So uh, again, that's, uh, that's where they are there. And Ms. McKnight is gonna seek uh, more input as things goes on through her, you know, through the CPC. And that's kind of the, um, the update and again having the cpc here when and uh when you guys speak if there's anything that you wanted to add that's a great uh you know great resource to have tonight because you're here so you know I, I thought it was appropriate that i give an update on something so important while some of the more experts that have been on it for a couple of you know been looking at it for a while to be on so um and that's it besides the you know later on the appointments for the zba the other uh board that i'm liaison to so Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Studo. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, I gave you an update on the Board of Health just a few minutes ago. And, and again, they continue their work and their efforts to uh, um, engage the public and educate the public uh, going forward. And, um, very important and they're doing it. The, the undertaking is, is difficult and they're taking it on. So I applaud their efforts. Uh, additionally, in, the, in relation to the view, uh, Hillview Commission has been uh, some correspondence back and forth uh, in discussions with uh, uh, a group on entertainment you know, that operates the uh, function hall facility. Uh, as everybody's aware, because of the uh, environment, because of this pandemic, they basically have been shut down since March. Uh, so basically no income, no, uh, yeah, no income, no, no, no functions, no bookings. Uh, they've had to refund uh, any bookings that they had. Uh, for the year and actually for a year and a half in advance, uh, they've had to uh, return those uh, those fees and bookings. So right now, there's nothing uh, booked for the uh, function hall uh, at all, and nothing in the foreseeable future. And of course, uh, the future doesn't look too too good for the type of facility that we have there, which is basically a function facility. Um, so as a result, uh, this evening we're going to be requested under licensing to uh, to renew the all alcohol. Uh, a vigilance license for, for a group on entertainment. Uh, Mr. Yeber had called the administration today and indicated that he wished to withdraw his application at this particular point in time until he gets some more definitive uh, ideas as to, you know, what the prospects are going forward uh, and being able to reopen there. Additionally, the board should be aware that the license agreement that we have with the uh, group one entertainment uh, goes through March 31st, 2021. <laughs> And then uh, at the recommendation of the commission, the town administrator, there can be an offer to uh, ex extend the license agreement, which we have already had the terms and conditions uh, uh, negotiated. Uh, but again, it's too premature to even think about that. So for uh, Group One Entertainment to uh, be putting up money for a, a license that they're not going to be able to use for months and months and months, um, I think it would be 
uh, that it's asked to uh, withdraw his application and it seems to be a wise move again uh, we can always issue a license at a, at a future date uh, if things open up and he's able to, to operate and can book some uh, some functions for this facility so we won't be having a motion tonight to uh, to renew uh, that application but i think it's important for the board to recognize and the commission has been uh, uh, very sensitive to, to, to what uh, the situation is there. Um, Group One Entertainment certainly does have obligations to the town as far as you know minimal rents that are supposed to be due uh, for each month and the covering of utilities. Uh, so that's all part of the discussions. But uh, they're working on it. Uh, we spoke. They had a meeting tonight as recently as this evening to talk about it too. So uh, withdrawing his application for renewal at this particular point and hopes to come back before the board at a future date. That's all, Madam Chair, thank you. Okay, I guess we'll probably have to hear from the commission about the, what the back and forth on that one. Yeah, uh, I, there's, been, there's been a significant amount of discussion about it as to you know, what's in the best interest of, uh, uh, of the town in this particular point in time, as far as you know, making sure that the facility is uh, well maintained and basically mothballed, you know, for the time being, and making sure that uh, everything's maintained there appropriately, and that's that's being taken care of at this point. But you know, who's going to assume the responsibilities at what particular point in time, and whether or not a license agreement is going to be extended to Maple First or not? A lot of it's going to be dependent upon uh, the environment, you know, the economic environment, and whether or not there's anything that cooperate there at this particular point in time. So right. it's unfortunate, you know, a significant amount of investment was made on the part of group one entertainment, you know, into the facility um, and they're unable to, to function, so. Yeah, we, we should probably have the commissioners in to kind of give us more details on that one, see what's happening with that, what the obligations were under the contract, what is no longer being, you know, met under the contract and, who's going to manage if they, they have a lot of activity over there, just not in their function room. Is that what you're saying? There's a lot of golfing going on there. It's certainly busy. Well, there was a, the other day, there was a lot of cross country skiing and snowshoeing because my wife and I were participating in that, but a lot of sledding. <laughs> I saw, I, I saw someone cross the road on skis. It looked fun, yeah. but maybe we'll we'll have them in it. The pro shop is open for a few more, a couple more days too, if you want to buy gift certificates. Um, yeah. But uh, other than that, there's nothing else going on. Again, nothing in the function office, so we know. Yeah, we should probably have them in at a meeting soon. And I just have one quick question for you on the Board of Health. Are they rolling out the vaccinations the same way that the, that's being recommended by the CDC of first responders are going to have elderly first responders? How are they, have they decided that yet? Or are they working on that? Uh, Michael, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, they're pretty much working on and waiting for guidance, more guidance from the, at the state level as to, you know, how to facilitate it, if and when we're actually going to get any vaccine here locally to mm -hmm. administer. Uh, they're setting themselves up, uh, getting prepared to have sites, you know, should the vaccines become available at the local level. Uh, if it's just going to be a distribution through, you know, CVS, Walgreens, those types of things, you know, then they're prepared again to uh, monitor that and public ed educate the public in relation to when it's available, how to go get it, who's eligible for it, and those sorts of things. But they're also setting up, getting prepared to offer um, the injections if they're provided with a vaccine to do so. But that hasn't been determined yet. So they're in communication with the state, uh, waiting to get some direction as to the dispensing of it and who's going to be responsible in what order. Uh, but as far as you know, who's going to get what? That's our, that's pretty well predetermined. Okay. All right, Mr. Michael. Anything you need to add? Anything I left out? Mr. O'Leary, all set. Yeah, is that yeah, it. I don't know if Michael wanted to add any more. Uh, the only thing I would add is that you know the the vaccine distribution in the phase one for first responders that is something that is being coordinated regionally with uh, nearby communities. So we we are involved involved in conversations with those communities relative to where our first responders will need to, 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 to go or how, how we will facilitate that. Um, I'm sure there will be much more to come with regard to the larger scale distribution. Okay, thank you. 
Mr. O'Leary, all set? All set, thank you. All right, Mr. Waller, anything, board member reports? I'll be brief. Um, the age-friendly uh, work with the UMass Gerontology group continues. We finished the focus group, we finished the survey. We're now moving on to um, serving other towns in Massachusetts that have intergenerational community centers. And so we're gonna be talking to Lexington, Randolph, Salmon, um, Salmon Salem, and Arlington uh, to get their feedback. And these are all fairly recent facilities. Actually, in one case, it's a new facility to understand fully what benefit it brings to the community, you know, what the downsides are. There's downsides everything and, and how they found the progression of those types of things. And then we're also gonna be talking um, to three other communities about uh, people who are further ahead than we are on the age-friendly initiative and the project leaders or even directors who work in that capacity to also get a feeling about how they made that happen. The age-friendly initiative is very broad. When you're talking about changing a whole community and how it looks at it. It's, it has to be performed on multiple levels. So, um, you know, figuring out how we're gonna drive this for years to come is very important. So. Um, so really two phases, Intergenerational Community Center, which is, you know, a, 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 a cornerstone for us, but also some sort of leadership to continue to drive this even beyond five years of implementation beyond that point. So that's where we're at with that. We're making really good progress very fast, and I hope to have reports by May um, to share with the town and with the board. Um, second thing, just very briefly. Um, the CPC is making great progress working with Abacus, who's our consultant, who's working on the Main Street and Winter Street project. Um, I think, you know, the concepts have been defined, the drawings have been pretty well defined, and uh, we're recognizing, and we should all know that this is going to be a private, private and public partnership. And so when you have to talk public, you're talking about developers, and we're coming up with all the the resistant points that developers might have um, to working with us. And so I think that, I think we, I think over the last week, I think it's been, become pretty clear what we need to work on. And uh, it's looking more, more positive that we can meet those needs. So again, I like Mr. Studio, because we both were in that meeting, you know, if Warren and Chris want to say something about it, add to this, you're welcome as far as I'm concerned if the chair allows it, but um, uh, good progress is being made. Um, that's it for my end. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And I just want to reiter reiterate what Mrs. Gonzalez said. We're very proud of um, Sergeant N. Carnicall. I hope I'm saying it right. Is that the correct pronunciation? Carcio. Carcio. Oh, beautiful, a beautiful name. Thank God we have first responders like that with the presence of mind and are paying attention and saving lives. So thank you to him and everyone that responded and, and uh, took care of that family. We're proud of you and we're proud to have you on our, on our police department. All right, so moving along, we're gonna thank you for your patience. I see the members of the CPC are joining us. We're meeting with the Community Planning Commission to discuss a joint appointment for the Economic Development Committee and then later we'll hear from the chair who's joined us to discuss the vacancy on the Community Planning Commission. So we have Mr. Pierce, we have Mr. Hayden, Danielle McKnight, our planners here, and- um, David Rudloff. Who are you? Me too. He's a, he's a snowman. Okay. <laughs> All right, David Rudloff. All right, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for being patient. We, we have a lot of board member reports. <coughs> there you are. We see you. Okay, welcome. Um, Mr. Gilberto, do you want to kick it off for us all or shall we go right? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I believe that there's been some discussion um, from uh, the perspective of the liaison with regard to these appointments. And I think there's been some conversation with the town planner as well. So uh, I'll defer, I, I think, first to Mr. Studo and if not to Ms. McKnight. Uh, yeah, as liaison to uh, the CPC and the voting member of the EDC, uh, we are prepared uh, to make an appointment for full member. And then I will defer to Mr. Hayden for the associate member appointments, if that's okay. Uh, or Danielle. <laughs> I don't know. 
Uh, or I mean, we can just not do I, I know I was prepared for the full member. So uh, appointment, not the associate member. So that was something. But we can start unless. Do you have nominations and motion for nominations? Yes, I do. Uh, Madam Chair, I move to jointly appoint the following individual as full member of the Economic Development Committee uh, for the term stated below through March 3rd, 2023. Um, Mr. Pat Lee. I second that. If I may, <laughs> you can't. You, you can't. I know it needs our, to be a select board member. You can't second our board. <laughs> no, <laughs> you'll go next. Though. I'll second, I'll second that, man. <laughs> I know what it's like. So we have Mr. Studo has made a motion for I'll Pat second. Lee, and Mr. O'Leary has seconded the motion. And we have heard from Mr. Studo, our liaison, and he's place Mr. Lee's name into nomination. It's a roll call vote. Is do we, do we have other nominations? Do we have other people who are seeking appointment? Not for full membership. No. Not for full membership. Okay, so any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll close the nominations. I don't know if we have to close since there's only one, but roll call vote. Mr. Walner. Aye. Mr. Studo. Oh, I'm sorry, just to say his name, Pat Lee. Oh, yeah. Pat Lee, thank you. <laughs> Mr. O'Leary. Patrick Lee. Ms. Gonzalez. Pat Lee. And Manny Pelli is Pat Lee. And now we're going to go over to the chair for your appointment, right? You do the same process. Yes, thank you. Um, so we have a, I'll do a roll call vote also. Uh, Mr. Hayden. Pat Lee. And um, Dave, Mr. Rudloff? Yep, Pat Lee. And the chair also is Warren Pierce's Pat Lee. All right, so we welcome Pat Lee. Now, it, um, for the associate member, right now, do you have any potential names for a nomination or is that something you wanted to discuss further and then come back to the board with? We have potential names, but maybe discuss further. We just uh, uh, there were a couple last week, late, late in the week, and then um, so if that's okay with you, Mr. Hayden, and then that's we can fine. Do it that's another, fine. yeah, rather than yeah. Okay. All right. So that is it for appointments, and so we'll we'll uh, hear from the chair on the vacancy for the uh, position there. For the uh, vacancy for the planning board, we um yeah um, Mr. Bell advance uh, offered up a resignation, and uh, so at this time we'd like to advertise for a uh, to replace that member. Um, one of the biggest reasons is we are looking at uh, finally uh, doing some public hearings, and um, we need a, a four-person vote. So with only four people on the on the commission, if we're a minus one person, there are votes that we can't take. So we really need to fill that position as soon as possible so that we can begin to serve the community um, with these public hearings as we move forward. So that's our primary goal right now. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Gilberto, did this get advertised? I seem to recall we had a discussion or maybe Ms. McKnight told us it was gonna be advertised. I remember discussing this, so. You're correct, yes, it has been advertised in the uh, the North Reading transcript, I believe last Thursday um, after the Planning Commission meeting on Tuesday evening. And I think you have a copy of that ad. We do need to get it up on the town website as well. I, I thought maybe we could have a conversation about establishing a deadline and trying to pick dates for interviews in January or whenever is appropriate since we're all here. That would be great. I would, um, if I may, I, I would like to see uh, what we get for um, um, responses. I mean, I think the last time we actually did this, we got some extremely well qualified people responded. And um, um, that actually was a difficult decision. <laughs> because we had such good qualified candidates that, that responded. And I'd like to hopefully some of those people will return and we'll, um, we'll have a good group to, to pick from um, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time. But since time is somewhat of the essence, I agree with Mr. Gilberto that we should set some timelines for doing the, the, um, the voting and the choosing of those. Uh, of, of hey, okay. So 
Mr. Studo? Is there um is there a way to to do it on social media as well? I mean, I'm I'm not because I'm yeah, I'm not down I mean, I'm not downplaying the power of the newspaper, but I know that, you know, if it's anything like me, the you know, you get eight newspapers a day and they just sit there stacked up and you know, where if it was on social media, I, I saw it, you know, before you know almost instantly. So Yes, we can we'll put it on the town hall Facebook page as well, Mrs. Soto. Good. So um, you're talking about a return to one of our meetings with the whole for another joint nomination and appointment process, right, Mr. Gilberto? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, through you, the interviews have traditionally been um, conducted. Um, they're a joint meeting, obviously, between the two committees, but they've been conducted on a separate evening from a regular select board meeting. I think it, at least once they may have been done in conjunction with a planning commission meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but there generally is at least one, if not more, meetings for interviews prior to a joint meeting where an appointment is made. That's at least that's been the practice. We certainly can handle it however we see fit. But in many helpful, cases, yeah, in many cases, what we've done is we've held a workshop and used the workshop as a as the platform for doing the uh, interviews. Okay, so do you have so you have it's been advertised. And is there a deadline to apply? I think by uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, and Danielle, you might be might be able to help me with this. So that we should provide at least a 30 day window. So I believe. Oh, oh, do you, oh, sorry. No, I just I I can check to see what the date was that was advertised. I think we did put a deadline on it. We did January 29th, uh, January 19th, Tuesday, January 19th at four o'clock p.m. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's our 30 day window, pr pretty much from the original advertising. So at that point, we would uh, probably then be willing to set up a meeting and do some joint interviews. Okay. So, uh, Mr. O'Leary's got his, uh, Mr. O'Leary and then Mr. No, 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 sorry. Uh, all right, Mr. O'Leary. Just, just a question. I mean, obviously whoever we appoint, uh, it would be an unexpired term to fill. So I assume at the next town election, this be someone who would have to run for the unexpired term. That's correct. So I think yeah, that's correct. Important for would be applicants to understand that uh, they would be expected, or we would hope that if they're going to be serving, they're willing to, to run in the election for a fully. Well, I don't know how much term is left. How much time is left on Mr. Bellavance's? Uh, His term was going to expire. It does expire in May. But does anyway. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is that correct, Danielle? Yes. 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 So okay. okay, so hopefully, you know, the person, you know, the people that are interested here to be also interested in running. Well, running. I think that's a, I think that's a good point. And, and it's probably a question that we would want to make sure that we ask in the interviews. Yeah, make sure we have somebody that would be committed to the to the job. Yeah, I just even in the announcement that we're looking for applicants, you know, we should announce that it's, you know, a term that expires, you know, in May, mm -hmm. and uh, we would hope that they would run. Right. That's great. Okay. And again, it just a comment on Bill Bellavance. I, I, I don't have to speak to for the uh, rest of the council for the uh, community planning commission, but I know my interactions with Bill over the years has been terrific, and he's been very much engaged and uh, committed to carrying out the, the duties and responsibilities. And obviously, he felt as though he wasn't able to do that to his own satisfaction, and found it necessary to step down. And I'm sorry to see that. Sorry to hear it, but uh, I wish him nothing but the best. And Mm -hmm. Certainly appreciate all the effort that he's put in over the last several years, and not just on the planning commission, but on other uh, assignments that he's taken on. He's he's done a great job. He's a good advocate for, for looking forward. You know, we're forward thinking here, not threatening. So okay. it's going to be missed. Yeah. Okay. So are you going to? Uh, I will let the chair, after you receive applications, reach out to the TA to set up a joint meeting with us because we're trying to plan something where we really we're not really sure time wise, right? But we expect it'll probably be at some point in February that we'll we'll probably have that workshop meeting with you. Yes, that's very likely, and we'll. So what we'll do is we'll we'll uh, hopefully get a, a good group of uh, respondents and uh, and we'll put together a, a, a an interview plan and in conjunction with the uh, with the board of, with the uh, select persons and see if we can't pick a good person here. So 
Great. Okay. All right. And that's that's it, right? Anything else? That'll Mr. do Pierce? it. That'll do it. All right. Thank you. You guys are gonna go home. I'll stay home. <laughs> <laughs> we are home. You're right. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Take a little nap, maybe. Thanks. Dan. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank All you. All right. Our next order of business is accept a gift for the Council on Aging. Mr. Studo? Or Mr. 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 Gilberto? <laughs> You. Madam Chair, I'm actually going to ask if we could pass over um, the acceptance this evening only because I, I through uh, no one's fault but my own, we don't have the director or the uh, representative of the uh, church here. So I'd like to give them the opportunity to attend, even if they elect not to, we can accept at the next meeting. Sure, of course. Thank okay. you. Next order of business is to vote to accept the donation of land, lot 164 Little Meadow Way. Madam Chair, um, thank you. So this is an acceptance of a parcel of land that's to the rear of the Little Meadow Way subdivision off of Marblehead Street. Um, part of the CPC's approval of the subdivision called for land to be um, gifted to the town under the care, custody and control of the Conservation Commission. And as you know, Madam Chair, it does require um, a corresponding uh, sign off by the select board in the acceptance of the parcel. Um, the parcel, I believe, is behind the house lots at the very end of the street. Um, uh, sort of uh, to the north, if you will, of the uh, subdivision. Uh, the, my understanding is that the Conservation Commission voted to accept the parcel at a previous meeting. There has been some discussion between town council and the developer's attorney, and uh, there is one outstanding matter that we have conditioned in the motion that's been prepared, um, which is subject to the review, I believe, of the title by uh, town council. Um, I'm just going to confirm exactly the language, make sure I did not misstate that. Um, subject to town council confirming the title and to sign the approval. So we, we put that in place just because there is a little bit of work left to do on that, which town council can handle. Um, but he felt that it would be, if the, the board is so amenable, um, or acceptable for the board to vote the approval at this point in time. <clears throat> and I know the town planner is, is here this evening. I don't think she was expecting to speak to this, but if, if she's still listening and has anything to add, she's certainly, I would invite her to through you, Madam Chair. Sure. Um, I didn't really have anything to add other than just to, to say that this was a condition of approval of a subdivision that, you know, was approved in 2009. Um, and uh, I had been part of the correspondence with attorney Eichmann. Um, he was comfortable with the board acting on this uh, tonight, um, just subject to his, uh, you know, completing the review of the title. Um, so that was all I had. And Ms. Ogden is also on the, on the line, I think. Okay. And good morning. Good evening, Mother Melissa Ogden for the developer jobs development. I'm not sure if that's and, my, um, my I connection. I have an issue to title cert, but it's conditioned upon uh, just getting an MLC or municipal certificate. Your Okay, that wasn't my. Sometimes that happens to me. No, 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 Melissa, your connection's bad. Maybe shut your video off. Shut your video off, and then maybe what that would work. All right, can you hear me now? Is that better? A little better, sure. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Melissa? All right. I'm joining again. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, it's going to be odd when we get back to in-person meetings. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. That's better. All right. So I am Melissa Ogden for JAWS Developments, and um, I have issued a title certification, sent it to um, uh, Mr. C Council for Town, Jonathan Eichmann, as well as um, 
Ms. McKnight. And um, I'm just waiting for a municipal lien certificate that I requested today. So, so I can certify that the taxes have been paid. And if they haven't been paid, we will pay those before we finalize our certification. Okay. So there's no is really no issue with the title. It's just waiting no. on that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Formality. All right. Is our do we have any questions? Uh, I just have one quick question for Mr. Gilberto because I don't know the answer to this. When it gets deeded, is it permanent conservation land, uh, permanent passive, um, in its existing state, and it will remain that way? My understanding is that the, the ma manner in which we would be accepting it as under the care, custody, and control of the Conservation Commission, that it would. Yes. Okay. If the planner or attorney Ogden need to correct me, certainly feel free to do so. No, that's correct. <clears throat> Great. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Mr. O'Leary? Just uh, looking at the map, I wasn't quite sure if there was direct access to it or is it landlocked? Um, I, believe, I believe there is access from Little Meadow Way. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm looking at the map, it doesn't show. It doesn't show it on hitting the roadway. That's why I was just asking. I'm looking it up now. Just I didn't have the plan in front of me because I didn't expect. I apologize. Well, maybe Danielle, do you recall? I don't. I can look at the um, plan. Uh, I mean, we just need the we need the map that's beside this one to, to see if it see mm -hmm. where. I mean, it, it looks to be a little. I think there's actually access from Haverhill Street. Oh, well, that if, could be too. Oh. Right? No, that's uh, if that little horseshoe is is a uh, little metal way, which I think it is yeah. there. That's that is. Um, I don't see access from a street, but I do see it intersecting with one of the trails in Harold Parker. Mm -hmm. I don't see street access though. That, that's also my understanding. The access would be through an existing trail system in Harold Parker State Forest, the okay. portion to the north of Marblehead Street. Um, for which I believe there's access via a gate on Marblehead Street and then from the northeast from Salem Street, I think. I think there's also Darrell Drive. Um, it, yes, although there's a trailhead you'd have to take to cross over Marblehead Street to that same sure. spot. So th there is access, but although it is not direct access, you have to go through um, existing Harold Parker State Forest land. Right, so it looks there's, as though there's access through uh, the public land well, by foot anyway. Or I, don't, I don't know if there's a uh, uh, public safety access you know, for firefighting or anything. But, uh, I'm just curious, again, looking at the map, I, I can see where Little Meadow is and I know it comes around in a horseshoe uh, type shape. And I didn't know if that little picket there sticking out there, you know, heads down just parallel behind all the properties there. And there's, um, Attorney Ogden indicated it might be access off of, Haverhill, off, of uh, off of Marblehead Street, but I, again, I can't see it with the. And at the big, I just had. I'm sorry, I only had the access to the the one plan sheet, but I'm just trying to grab uh, the the larger plan sheet. Regardless, that's just for informational purposes. Not going to affect my vote. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious as to you know, are we use the landlocked land, or is there any type of access? even for passive recreation or. It looks like it's, it's a, a utility. Uh, I don't know if you need to have your waiters on to get through it or not, but. <laughs> it, it's, it's, the deed says it's a, it's a utility card that looks like it's to the Northeast corner um, mm -hmm. of that. Uh, I mean, north Northwest corner of that. My map was sideways, but the Northwest corner, it looks like it's depicted in that lot power, a power um, easement, power line easement. Yeah, there's a, um, there is a power line. It's a, a 200 foot wide that goes from Little Meadow way back. Um, okay. 
I just found it, so I apologize. I just need to get the. I just needed to get the big plan sheet, and I apologize for not having that. I just had the one. Um, it is landlocked. Oh. Well, wow. and I don't have I, but but I don't have a larger map map of the whole area. Um, there's there seems to be one of the walking trails actually leaves Little Meadow Way and goes over Lot Seven. I don't know what kind of easement there might be across that, but that then connects to the trail system, so you Matt, could get yeah. to Little Meadow Way that way. But there's no actual street connection to this property. Madam Chair. Mr. Gilberto. May I share my screen to show us a GIS? Sure, that'd be great. Thank you. I was just <laughs> trying to find that right now. So attorney Ogden or Ms. McKnight, if I've got the wrong parcel highlighted, please correct me, but I believe this is the parcel in question. Yes. This is Little Metal Way. These are the house lots that have, yeah. have frontage. Um, there is a sort of, um, area that extends here, but it is obstructed by a house lot. So this is uh, Harold Parker State Forest to the north of Marblehead Street. There is a fire gate, um, I believe, right over in this vicinity. Right, to the east of Bradford Pond, yep. Yep, that goes back. There's a walking trail that connects over. This is all Harold Parker land. It's actually land to the north as well. Um, it, actually, I, I take that back. Nope, that's, a, that's actually part of a house lot. So it, it does add to contiguous Harold Parker State Forest land. There's actually a very small access point from the area off of um, Foley and, Ar and, and Arlene and Daryl Drive that you're talking about, Ms. McKnight. You just have to cross Marblehead Street to get to it. So it would yeah. seem to fit within the scope of expanded conservation space. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. All right, any questions? Thank you for that. That that's, uh, makes it more clear. It's a nice right. visual. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. visual. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. Glad to see our GIS is, up, is working well too. <laughs> All right, any further questions? Seeing none, do we have a motion? There is a motion. <laughs> You're muted. Sorry, I was on mute. I was on mute. Madam Chair, I move to approve acceptance by the Conservation Commission of a parcel of land identified as Lot 164, open space, on plan entitled Definite Plan Bradford Pond Estates, North Reading, Mass., dated November 3rd. 2008, revised through June 10, 2009, subject to town councils confirming the title and to sign the approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Do we lose Mr. Walner? I don't think he's John Q. Public, so I don't see him. It, it appears so. He is not in the waiting room either, Madam Chair. I'm going to text him. <laughs> just give him a second. He must have just lost his connection there. I'm glad I'm not the only one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the fun of virtual meetings. <laughs> We're learning all this new technology, what works, what doesn't. I know, we're, I know we're in the middle of a vote, but I just wanted to give him the opportunity to rejoin. Madam Chair, he did just text me that his computer locked up. Oh, all right. All right, well, we'll move on. Any call um, in? It's a good idea. This is a first stop in the, in the middle of the vote. As much as we like to look at it, we don't have it. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm sure it's happened before, but he was here. He was here for the whole meeting. <laughs> he was here for all the discussion on that too. Is he gonna call Mr. Gilberto? He, he hasn't, um, he said, keep going without me, I will catch up. All right, okay. So Mr. Walner is just momentarily absent and Manu Pelli is I, so that it's uh, approved subject okay. to those conditions. Thank you too for Thank joining you. us and giving us the explanation. And I will, I will coordinate with Mr. Gilberto and Ms. McKnight about getting everything signed and then work with uh, Attorney Eichmann to get the title resolved. Okay, that's, yeah, that's another good point. We normally sign all these as a board. Would, would we be doing that through DocuSign? Um, I could, if, do people go to town hall still? Because <laughs> yes, I can I can coordinate having people sign. If you need a notary, I can notarize one signature. So I'll I'll coordinate with. Sure, with Mr. Them. Mr. Gilbert will reach out and let us know okay. what works for him and the town. So thank you, <laughs> thank you. All right, thank all right, you. okay. Our now our next order of business are license renewals, um, a list of licenses which may be discussed and voted on subject to applications. And Madam Do Chair, we, Mr. Gilberto. There were motions that were separately uploaded into the share file meeting folder for this evening's meeting. Um, they are a separate document and I believe they are entitled 12-21-2020 motions dash license renewals. Mr. Studo, do you have those? Yes. Great. I have both those and the next ones for the appointments. Great. Let me start. Here we go. Please. Madam Chair, I move to renew the following common particular licenses to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Beyond Bagels, Inc., Captain Pizza, China Cuisine, Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, Shauna Donuts, Inc., Ginger Gourmet, Horseshoe Cafe, Inc., Joe Fish Restaurant, Joe Fish Seafood Restaurant, Kitty's Restaurant, Inc., Mario's Restaurante, Papa Gino's, Ryer's Store, Suarez LLC, DBA Subway, The Lobster Claw, Dos Lobos. Second. Before we continue, I didn't realize Dos Lobos was included in that batch. So I do have to recuse myself from this entire discussion and vote, et cetera, like I did previously. So um, I apologize, but I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Gonzalez and I'll be marked as recusing myself due to a family member uh, working at one of those establishments. Is three enough to vote? Okay. Yes. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Studo and we had a second by Mr. O'Leary. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. And Gonzalez is aye. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following common particular all license alcohol licenses to expire December. 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. China Cuisine, Ginger Gourmet, Horseshoe Cafe, Inc., Joe Fish Seafood Restaurant, Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, Dos Lobos. Second. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Studo. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. And Mrs. Gonzalez is aye. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following common and particular wines and malt license to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Mario's Ristorante. Second. A motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. O'Leary? Aye. And Gonzalez is aye. And Mr. Walner has returned. Aye. Can you hear me? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was that an aye? That was an aye. <laughs> aye. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. 
Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following club all alcohol fraternal license to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Loyal order of Moose. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Studo. I have a second from Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. And Ms. Gonzalez is aye. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device licenses to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Kitty's Restaurant and Lounge, Loyal Order of Moose, Papa Gino's, Sports, Spirits, and Steaks. Second. A motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. <coughs> Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. And Gonzalez is aye. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following package store all alcohol licenses to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. New England Beverage and Redemption, One Stop Liquors. Second. I have a motion from Mr. Studo, a second from Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. <clears throat> Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. And Gonzalez is aye. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following package store wine and malt beverage licenses to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Christopher's Market, Ryer Store. Second. A motion by Mr. Stewart. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I know we're in the middle of this, but um, Madam Chair, are you able to vote now? I, I can vote, but I, I didn't want to disrupt you because you're actually moving it along really quickly <laughs> and I didn't want to disrupt you. Well, I wasn't yeah. hearing Dos Lobos anymore, so it dawned on me that you would probably be able to right. vote. It's Dos Lobos and Heavenly Donuts, and I think you already voted on both of those. I would have to recuse myself from those, but. Okay. Except the last one has Heavenly Donuts on it, so you can't. Yes. I, I, see, I didn't, I didn't see the uploaded, so I apologize, but. So. so so the next I'll let two you keep going. Mrs. Well, we didn't Gonzalez. finish that one. So I had a motion from Mr. Studo and a second for Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Madam Chair. <laughs> uh, uh, and Manu Pelli is aye. And Gonzalez is aye. Ma we back to Madam Chair for the next two. If it's not Heavenly or Lobo. Let's follow the clerk's lead. We'll do that. Let's, we'll do that let's keep. Let's let the vice chair continue, okay. and and I'll recuse okay. for anything that that I need to recuse. Okay. How's that? That's probably okay. easier for for Jane to record it that way. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following jukebox license to expire December thirty first, twenty twenty one, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Loyal order of Moose. Second. I have <laughs> a motion for Mr. Studo. A second from Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Ms. Manupelli. Aye. And Ms. Gonzalez is aye. Madam Judge, Vice Chair, I will be recusing myself from the next motion. That's my license. Okay. Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following class one license to expire January 1st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements, Bobcat of Boston. Second. Okay, I have a motion for Mr. Stewart, <clears throat> second for Ms. Manupelli. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Ms. Manupelli. Aye. And Gonzalez is aye. Um, Madam, Madam, is uh, Madam Vice Chair, I move to renew the following license to expire December 31st, 2021, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Kawabanga's Entertainment LLC, Automatic amusement device, Heavenly Donuts, Common Particular, Non Center Cafe, Common Particular, Teresa's Prime Girl 19, Common Particular, Sunday Entertainment, All Alcohol, Wendy's, Common Particular. I'm even saying that right at this point. I've been repeating it so much. J Mac Inc., DBA Subway, Common Particular, Route 28, Lucky Mart. Package store wine and malt beverage, Speedway package store wine and malt beverage, sports, spirits and steaks, common particular, Sunday, entertainment, all alcohol, automatic amusement device, 
and to further instruct the town administrator to notify said licensees that if they do not submit all required paperwork by December 31st, 2020, their license will not be released and they will be ordered to cease all business operations. I'm going to recuse myself because one of those licenses is uh, I have a family member that works there. One of those common victuals. Uh, I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Studo, a second from Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. <clears throat> Mr. Walner. Aye. Gonzalez is aye. <clears throat> Appointment. That's it. That's it. All right. Yep, that's it. Thank you. Renewals. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. Gilberto, just a quick question on that. In is the common victualers like the liquor license required to be an application required to be in by a certain time frame? Madam Chair, I believe that the November 30th requirement is exclusive to the Alcoholic Beverage Control Commission license. Establishment. I'm not aware of a specific date for renewal for a straight common victualer without the alcohol implication. Um, but the individuals that you see on here, they, I, I believe, and Ms. Brooks can correct me, they have all applied, but they are in various states of um, needing to, to comply with departmental issues along the way, which we've seen in the past. And this is a very similar approach where we will give them the courtesy of a detailed notice of the issues so that they can come into compliance before December 31st. If they do not, they will not be able to open on January 1st. Um, and often we found that this strategy has worked and we've gotten everyone into compliance by that date. And we're hopeful that that will be the case again, but we will notify them of their status so that they have the opportunity to come into compliance. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, our next order of business is appointments as various um, committees and commissions. Do we have any motions? Yes. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment, appointment to the Cultural Council for terms to expire December 31st, 2023. Philip Healy, Incumbent, Daniela Claiborne, Mirko Mesa, Sil Sylvia Agayo, Jan Huang, Nancy Ludwig. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And do we have a recommendation? Yes. Recommendation. Uh, the liaison, I recommend. Yes, I recommend all the names listed. So it's one for one, all, all filling vacancies, Mr. Waller? Um, there's actually, you can have up to 22 seats on that particular uh, committee. So uh, we're just filling them up. So we're happy to have them. Great, good. All right. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. We've heard from the liaison. Do we have any further discussion? All right, closing nominations and we'll take a, a vote. Mr. Studo? Aye. Mr. Your name? <laughs> I, oh, do we have to see the name? Yes. Why don't, why don't you give us the last names again as you vote, Mr. Studo? Uh, Healy, Claiborne, Mesa, Agayu, Hong, Ludwig. Aye. That was very fast. <laughs> Healy, Claiborne, Mesa. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, you guys don't have them in front of you. Sorry. No. Where, where is it in our, is it in our packet? Yes. What page is it? It's in what the, page? thanks, Mike. It's in the, no, it's not in the page. It's a separate, it's in the share file, but it's a separate. Thank you. Uh, this will be best for us if you can do oh, this. Oh, there we go. Each of these. Perfect. Mr. Thank Gilbert. you. Oh, great. Excellent. All right. Thank you. So, Mr. <laughs> so. Uh, Mrs. Gonzalez, I think you were voting next. Um, Healy, Claiborne, Mesa, Agaglio, Hong, and Ludwig. Mr. O'Leary. Philip Healy, Daniela Claiborne, Marco Mesa, Sylvia Aguayo, Yan Huang, and Nancy Ludwig. Mr. Walner. Philip Healy, Daniela Claiborne, Marco Mesa, Sylvia Aguayo. Uh, Jan Wang and Nancy Ludwig. Manu Pelli is Philip Healy, Daniela Claiborne, Marco Mesa, Sylvia Aguayo, Jan Wang, and Nancy Ludwig. 
So that's good. We have six new members to the Cultural Council. Congratulations. Madam All Chair, right. I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment, appointment to the Historical Commission for terms to expire December 31st, 2023. There are four openings, Patricia Romeo, Francine Coughlin, Joanna Williams, Harksha, David Cross. Second. Motion by Mr. Sudo, second by Mr. O'Leary, four for four. And it, this is Mrs. Gonzalez, right? Uh, nope, actually, this is me again. Sorry, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Okay. Waller. Historical no, it's okay. Commission. No Mr. big Waller. deal. Um, yeah, no, again, it's um, it's nice to, we haven't filled up the Historical Commission in a long time. So this is nice that uh, we have people, we have incumbents coming back who have history and are movers and shakers. And we have two new people who are really excited about doing this work. So it's nice to have a full, full committee here. Great. Okay, Miss, Mrs. Mr. Studo. Hi. Did I say the name? Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. Sorry. Patricia Romeo, Francine Coughlin, Joanna Williams Hawkside, David Cross, Mrs. Studo's I. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Patricia Romeo, Francine Coughlin, Joanna Williams Hawksha, and David Cross. Mr. O'Leary. Patricia Romeo, Francine Coughlin, Joanna Williams Hawksha, and David Cross. Mr. Walner. Patricia Romeo, Francine Coughlin, Joanna Williams Hawksha, and David Cross. Yeah, Manu Pelli is Patricia Romeo, Francine Coughlin, <laughs> Joanna Williams Hawksha, and David Cross. So that's full now, Mr. Walner, right? That is correct. Great. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the Martins Pond Study Committee for terms to expire on December 31st, 2023. There are three openings and two nominations. Joel Spruance, Joanna Williams, Hoxha. And, and again, those are, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead, Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Walner. No, again, uh, this is a, you know, Martin's Pond is a good group. They have a lot of work coming up in the spring. Um, and I, I know we're seeing Joanna's name again, but she she was concerned about being on two committees. Just wondering if that was allowed. Definitely allowed. And uh, she has a lot of experience in this regard. So it's a good recommendation. And for the record, you seconded that motion, correct? And I second the motion. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Studo. Joel Speranza, Joanna williams Hoxai, uh, I on both. Mrs. Gonzalez. Joel Sperance and Joanna williams Hoxai. Mr. O'Leary. Joel Sperance and uh, Joanna williams Hoxha. Mr. Walner. Joel Sperance and Joanna williams Hoxha. And Manu Pelli is Joel Sperance and Joanna williams Hoxha. Next motion. Hmm. Sorry, I lost there. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the Taxation Aid Committee for terms to expire on December 31st, 2023. There are two openings and two nominations. Mary Prinny, Yan Huang. I have a mo motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. <clears throat> Mr. Walner. Uh, yes, again, it's um, this is a committee I've never actually really met with, but apparently they don't meet very much. So we're planning to get together in January, but both recommendations are good recommendations. Great. Okay. Mr. Studo. I on Mary Prenny and Yan Huang. Mrs. Gonzalez. Mary Prenny and Yan Huang. Mr. O'Leary. Mary Prenny, Yan Huang. Mr. Walner. I'll just add that Deb Carbone is the third person in here, just so you know. Uh, so Mary Prenny and Yan Wong. So committee of three? It's a committee of three, yes. Thank you, Mr. Walner. Next uh, appointment. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the Forest Committee for terms to expire on December 31st, 2023. There's there's one opening and the two nominees are Allison Polito and Chris Liebert. From the liaison 
Do we have uh, a recommend recommendation? Yeah, give me a second. Sorry. That's all right. No, the reason why is because I, I got it mixed up the last time. I don't want to mix it up again. Um, yeah, Allison Polito is a uh, is a yes. That's the recommendation. Okay. okay. All right. So we've heard from the liaison, and we have actually. Did anyone second that motion, Mr. O'Leary? Did you second? Yes, I did. Yes. Mr. Studo's motion. Mr. O'Leary second. The liaison has. Um, uh, recommended Allison Polito. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Aye on Allison Polito. Mrs. Gonzalez. Allison Polito. Mr. O'Leary. Allison Polito. Mr. Walner. Allison Polito. And Manny Pelli is Allison Polito. Okay. Mr. Studo, do we have a, a oh, Yeah, I'm looking right at it and just waiting. I, I feel like a robot, like I have to be told what to do. <laughs> Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following name for appointment as associate member to library trustees for a term to expire December 31st, 2023. Deborah Aldrich. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Studo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Oh, and sorry, I skipped ahead, by the way. I'm sorry. I, I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I read the next one. My apologies. There's two of them. Okay. So that was the associate. Uh, there's, there's, actually th there's actually three openings. So you- No, no, I read the one for the associate member, Madam Chair. Sorry, yes, I'm okay. at both of them. So. so that's the next one, okay. I can read, I'll read this one. Madam Chair, I move the place. No, I, I mean, we, we already have a motion and a second on the floor for the next one. So we'll just scroll back to that. And I can explain as the liaison. I have a motion by Mr. Sudo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. There are three openings. There are actually three members, two of whom are, are up for reappointment and one of whom was already an associate serving that's going to be going into the regular, a regular position. And then Deborah Aldrich is um, uh, uh, already serving. Um, as an associate and wants to continue her service as an associate. So um, the recommendation would be to uh, reappoint Deborah Aldrich as an associate member, and then we'll get back to the other motion. Okay. So, if that explains it. So I have a motion by Mr. Sudo, a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any questions, any further <laughs> discussion? It's seeing none, Mr. Studo. For the, associate, for the associate membership. Deborah Aldrich. Mrs. Gonzalez. Deborah Aldrich. <coughs> Mr. O'Leary. Deborah Aldrich. Mr. Walner. Deborah Aldrich. And Manny Pelli is Deborah Aldrich. So can we right. go? <laughs> right. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment appointment to the library trustees for terms expired December 31st, 2023. Jennifer Stritzel Thompson, Mirko Mesa, Katie Gabriello. Second. <coughs> Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Jenny and Mirko are already completed terms and are up from reappointment. Katie um, <coughs> is an associate that the chair would like to not put into the regular trustee position. And these are all recommendations from the chair. So Jennifer, Jennifer Thompson, Mirko Mesa, Katie Gabriella would be recommended. Um, so I have a motion, a second by Mr. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Ms. Laura O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Studo. Jennifer Sutzel Thompson, Mirko Mesa, Katie Gabriella. Mrs. Gonzalez. Jennifer Stritzel Thompson, Mirko Mesa, Katie Gabriella. <clears throat> Mr. O'Leary. Jennifer Stritzel Thompson, Mirko Mesa, and Katie Gabriello. Mr. Walner. Jennifer Stritzel Thompson, Mirko Mesa, and Katie Gabriello. And Manu Pelli is Jennifer Stritzel Thompson, <coughs> Mirko Mesa, and Katie Gabriello. <coughs> okay. 
Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following name for reappointment as member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for a term to expire on December 31st, 2023. Jennifer Platt, who currently serves as the chair. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. And Mr. Studo, I know it's one for one, but do you want to make the recommendation? Yep. Uh, yes. Um, I want to thank Ms. Uh, Platt for uh, uh, continuing on. I think continuity is important. Um, so I have full recommendation to the board. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Studo. <clears throat> Aye. To Jennifer Platt. Mrs. Gonzalez. Jennifer Platt. Mr. O'Leary. Jennifer Platt. Mr. Walner. Jennifer Platt. And Manu Pelly is Jennifer Platt. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names, one for reappointment, one for appointment of associate members to the Zoning Board of Appeals as for the terms listed. Maria Lockhart through December 31st, 2023 as a reappointment. Frank Gonzula through December 3rd, 31st, 2022 as an appointment. <clears throat> I have a motion by Mr. Studo. Do I have a second? Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo? I'd like to add these are um, recommendation by uh, Chair Platt, which I um, also, uh, I, I agree with. And also I do believe that one, there is a third opening that we're still waiting for. There's one, there's a one one year term for an associate member where we are still looking for a candidate. So I think there it said two openings, but there's actually three. There's one uh, one year term that is not being filled at this time. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing a Mr. Studo. I am Maria Lockhart and Frank Gonzola. Mrs. Gonzalez. Maria Lockhart, Frank Gonzola. Mr. O'Leary. Maria Lockhart and Frank Gonzola. Mr. Walner. Maria Lockhart, Frank Gazzola. And Manu Pelli is Maria Lockhart and Frank Gazzola. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following names for reappointment as members of the Water Commission for terms to expire December 31st, 2023. Vincent Ragucci, Andrew Street. Second. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. O'Leary. And it's two for two, two for two openings. Is there any other? No. No, I'll, okay, Mr. Studo. Ida Vincent Ragucci, Andrew Street. Mrs. Gonzalez. <laughs> Vincent Ragucci, Andrew Street. Mr. O'Leary. Vincent Ragucci and Andrew Street. Mr. Walner. Vincent Ragucci, Andrew Street. And Manu Pelli is Vincent Ragucci <clears throat> and Andrew Street. All right. And that's it, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. Our next order of business is legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for October 2020 in the amount of $14,108.25 as follows. $52.94.25, general, $49.53, labor, 38.61, 20 Elm Street for a total of $14,108.25. Second. Now, and I hope that's right because I wasn't able to confront it because my two-year-old broke the calculator at some point today. <laughs> Oh, you know, you exercise that your muscle there a little bit. You put your head. <laughs> Start that kid young. Miss <laughs> motion by Mr. Studo, <laughs> second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? Seeing none. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. W Gonzalez. Aye. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. And Manu Pelli is aye. That's it for legal bills, right, Mr. Studo? Correct. Next order of business is our town administrator's <laughs> report. Madam Chair, thank you. Just a couple of notes relative to solid waste and recycling. Uh, the first is that uh, due to the way the 
holiday falls this year. There actually is no impact on the dates for our trash and recycling collection. It will be Tuesday this week, tomorrow. It will be Tuesday next week and Tuesday the week after as well. Um, Christmas tree collection, curbside Christmas tree collection will take place on Saturday, January 9th. And I believe trees must be curbside by 6.30 a.m. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks, Mr. Gilberto. Any questions? All set. We're on to old and new business. Mr. Studo. Uh, none. I'd just like to say uh, happy holidays and a happy new year to everyone. It has been a trying year, to say the least. And every time we think we've had a handle on things, there's been a new challenge. But also, I have to say that town-wide and just in general, we've met the challenges pretty good considering there's been no guide to this. There's no book. There's nothing. I mean, the closest thing is uh, from, a you know, almost 100 years ago during the Spanish flu, which is, you know, not just three, four generations, three generations past, but, you know, it's very hard to, to gauge. So I, I just like to applaud all, all the I've seen what North Reading has done. And I, I feel not that I'm biased because I live here at all. But I feel like compared to some other towns, I mean, I think North Reading has had very few, if any, missteps. And any missteps have been recovered remarkably quick. So I'd like to thank everyone. And again, uh, let's stay safe. We got just a, you know, one major holiday left. Hopefully, hopefully we can be singing a different tune come March and April. And, uh, you know, that's it. Thanks, Mr. Strudo. Mrs. Gonzalez. Uh, I, I have to um, say the same thoughts. Um, you know, we're, I think we're all looking forward to starting a new year um, and hopefully it being better. We've learned a lot from this. Not everything was bad. I mean, these Zoom meetings, we are in our own house and <laughs> comfy and don't have to drive anywhere and um, try to look at the positives and less of the negatives. We have learned things. People have spent more time together, slowed down. Um, so, you know, there, there were good things that came of it. And let's just hope that this vaccine will come through and that we can move forward. And I wish everybody a happy holiday and a happy new year. Thank you, Mrs. Gonzalez. Mr. O'Leary. Um, First of all, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the, the passing of a former resident here in North Reading. His ha name happens to be Stephen O'Leary, so it wasn't me. Uh, I, I was the other Stephen O'Leary uh, <laughs> back in the back in the late seventies uh, and early eighties. I happened to be moderator and was able to appoint members of the finance committee. And uh, Steve O'Leary, Stephen Q. O'Leary, lived on Haverhill Street, also, um, which is where I grew up on Haverhill Street. Uh, raised his hand and volunteered to be a member of the finance committee and right. served for a couple of terms and. Um, again, he was an active member of the community, uh, active member of the business community in the region. He owned a business over in uh, Wilmington uh, for a number of years. And uh, again, appreciate his service and he died an untimely death. And, um, but again, great public servant, terrific guy, terrific personality, uh, got along very well, was a good steward, member of the finance committee. And again, uh, my condolences go out to his family uh, in his passing. And, uh, but again, I didn't want to uh, let the time go by without acknowledging his uh, past. Uh, service to the community and its contributions. I'd also like to echo uh, my colleagues' uh, comments in relation to Sergeant Encarnacio and the fire department in relation to the uh, speedy response and timely response, fortunately, uh, uh, for that family that Mr. Encarnacio, uh, Sergeant Encarnacio was on his way home and had the wherewithal to recognize what was going on and took swift action to, uh, to save some lives. So uh, congratulations to Sergeant Encarnacio, congratulations to the fire department for their uh, great service and um, appreciate uh, all that they do, not just on that particular occasion, but every day. Um, again, just want to uh, say good riddance to 2020 <laughs> and wish everybody a Merry Christmas and uh, happy holidays and a uh, happy and healthy new year. Again, looking forward to it. And uh, to Mr. Studo's point, and Mrs. Gonzalez, I mean, there have been some good things that have come out of this in relation to uh, our own method of operating uh, here as a board, but also as a family and as a community that uh, we've had to adjust. And I think uh, it's helped us refocus uh, a little bit as to where our priorities really are and where they need to be. So I look forward to 2021. I hope there's a speedy uh, vaccine that comes to and everybody gets healthy. So again, 
a happy new year and uh, Merry Christmas and happy holidays to my colleagues too, Alberto and Jean yeah, yeah. and everybody else is listening in. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Walner. Um, I'll just say, yeah, because this was we're kind of wrapping up the year. Um, I'll just say that um, you know I sit on a lot of committee meetings. I talk to a lot of volunteers in town, and I'm just amazingly impressed by all the amount of effort people put out to make things happen. How much people do participate how much people are willing to give up time to better our community and better our town. And so I just want to say, I really appreciate that. I think it's a wonderful trait that we have in our town. I hear from people outside of our town. That's very unusual that we have that. And we're really lucky to have that. So, um, you know, just, just my appreciation uh, that people do that. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Walner. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't want to reiterate, but I will say I did want to point out that, there's, a, there's so much behind the scenes that people don't see, that they don't hear about, that we don't talk about. We're not just picking a meeting date and talking about everything here. And I just want to applaud the efforts of all of our administration, the town administrator, our board of health, our police, our fire, our entire team. We had our finance team working around the clock on things. We had our superintendent, brand new superintendent, working around the clock with his team. Everybody from the tech team to the public facilities team to the town, the, to the moderator, like Mr. O'Leary just mentioned, our moderator working to make outdoor meetings for us, indoor meetings for us, keeping us safe, keeping us informed. And it was just a, this year was just an incredible effort that people put in. And I just want to thank them and applaud them and, no, they probably didn't get to take any vacation time or to get any downtime from this because I think what's unseen is the kind of round the clock work that people put in. And it's, it is, it's an unprecedented time, like Mr. Studo said, we don't need to repeat that, but I know any time, it doesn't matter what time I try to contact the TA, he's also available and he has his own family to take care of. And we did also have uh, a new family, Mr. Studo welcomed a, a new family member. So there are, there are, there is a little light at the end of the tunnel and rainbows despite all of this. So I just want to say thank you to my board members for their adaptability for our, our entire staff, superintendent, for our TA, for our finance team, for their resiliency that they, they've shown. I want to wish everybody a uh, happy and holy and healthy holidays and hope that by the new year and the next time we meet, we'll have a lot of incredible progress on eradicating this one. And just to thank my, my board members for moving with the flow and continuing with these hours and hours of meetings that people don't see. People don't see you're doing, but we know you're committed. So thank you to all of you as well. And with that, do I have a motion to adjourn? 8.55. I was going to say a Christmas miracle already. And it's not uh, even Christmas Eve. Before we, adjourn, <laughs> before we adjourn, and with that thought, Christmas miracle, I just want to, anybody's listening, any board members, earlier my son and I went out to view the Star of Bethlehem, which is shining tonight for the first time in 800 years, I read. Oh, wow. So, um, Pretty cool. I, I don't know if you can still see it. It was starting to get cloudy, but um, we got to see it earlier. That's cool. I got more trash to take out, so I'll take a look. <laughs> <laughs> All motion right. To adjourn. Second. A motion to adjourn. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Studo. Aye. Mrs. Gonzalez. Hi. Mr. O'Leary. Aye. Mr. Walner. Aye. Manny Pelly is aye. Good night, folks. Bye, everyone. Merry Good night, everyone. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Thank you, Jane.